lockdown has been imposed in Austria, uh, with uh, also uh, the Netherlands following suit. Germany, Italy, Belgium, the Czech Republic and Slovakia, many others likely to follow, we're told. Mandatory vaccines to be uh, imp imposed in Austria from next February. Germany saying they're likely uh, to do the same. So are we going to see any of these measures here? And should we? see any of these measures here. I think my regular listeners will know my answer to that, but let's see what Dr. David Lloyd thinks. He's a GP at the Ridgeway Surgery in Harrow in London and joins us right now. Good morning to you, David. Good morning. Um, when you look at the footage uh, of what was going on in America, in Europe, you see the, the, the COVID cases and you see the protests on the streets. Is your reaction the same of mine, which is absolute horror at the measures and, and actually, well, to a certain extent, cheering on for me cheering on the protesters who were standing up against it what's your reaction i think i'd i'd say the opposite i'd say that um we have got to do everything we can we've learned over 19 months now that we're always behind uh, in this terrible virus and the way that it affects us this should be a warning sign from us for us our covid rates are going up they've gone up 15 percent in the last week so we need to we need to be worried because Things are different from the way they were 19 months ago. You've got 90, we, as a GP, as people working in the health service, we're now 19 months into this crisis. We're tired, we're fed up. Uh, and now we're just looking after people that haven't been vaccinated. Our ITUs are full of unvaccinated people. Uh, and with those ITUs really should be full of people who've had their hip operations and their knee operations that have been waiting for years, that are walking around in agony. It's unfair for this country to be using our health service as a way of coping with unvaccinated people. Well, I mean, our, our health service is used to deal with poorly people. There are plenty of people who get poorly for many different reasons, whether yes. they're obese. Should we, shall we, we say, shall we say, we will go on looking yes, after that's what I'm saying. Should we say it's, un, it's unfair for the NHS to use up resources dealing with obese people or smokers? That, that, that's, that's a very slippery slope there. I'm not suggesting that we don't look after them, but I'm suggesting we should adjust the balance. And we can do that by making it compulsory for people to be wearing, having their vaccines and compulsory for people to wear a mask in public. It's not an awful ask, is it? Oh, it is. No, it's those, those are both very, it's absolutely very awful. awful. Is that absolutely awful? They're both. They're both. Yes, they are asking people to cover their faces when the evidence that masks make any difference to the spread of there the virus is. There is a huge, is, there is a huge David, bank, data bank of data, data David, on masks. David, they're, 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 most of that data is computer models or it's the use of if, no. if, you're, if, if people you look, are wearing if look, medical yeah. masks in a controlled environment. Absolutely, they were. The, the, the masks that people wear, the, ba the, the blue paper and plastic ones and the cloth masks make at, their, at best, at best, 10% difference. And that is the at the very, very, very best extreme. May I refer you to research done in the United States a year ago? You can. I've looked at all the research and I've spoken to lots of experts about the research and the limitations of a lot of that research. And, and, that, and that is, and that is, that so is you will, what the you evidence You would go is. on the underground now not wearing a mask? I go on the underground every single day not wearing a mask, yes. Quite happy. I think that's outrageous. I, I think it's outrageous. So you should insist that someone wears a mask when it makes no darn difference. It makes an enormous it, difference. It, it doesn't. Is there is no virus, evidence that it does. Viruses spread in the air. Yes, they do. Yes, they spread in the air. Yes, but I don't have COVID. Yes, but you, so how you am I spreading more, COVID? But someone in that in that train carriage. Could I don't. Be I don't COVID. care if someone in that carriage that, has. Oh my COVID. goodness! Look, there's Julie Hartley, and she's not wearing a mask. Mm. It's a terrible message. What? 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 Oh, so. Oh, now it's about the message. This is about the theatre of mask wearing it's, again, isn't it? No, it's not. It's, it's about a, the It's the, it I'm a nice person, I wear a mask. That's that's what it's about. Not actually no. saving lives. I am, you are saving lives by wearing a mask. Well, I'm, I'm busy not saving lives then, but um, there is no, there is really no, no evidence that shows that it makes any serious difference. And certainly the way that most people wear their masks and the sort right. of masks they wear. I think we'll agree to differ on this one. Do we, you oh want no, to mine, on? mine is based on the data, so we, we can agree so to differ. So mine is, so is mine. But uh, I, are we, do you want to go on having a thousand I, people dying every week from COVID in the UK? Do you want to go on having many, many more people dying from over the years who not being treated because we, we, we have so much focus on COVID? I, I I'm just said- Hold on, hold on. You've gone back on yourself there. You said to me just now that I shouldn't be concentrating on treating COVID patients. No, I hospital. didn't. I should be concentrating on everybody, the obese. No, the poor. I didn't. I quite agree with you. No, it no, is, I didn't should, say that. We should be using the health service to do what we can. 
And the health service will be better if everybody is vaccinated and wearing a mask. I, I agree on the vaccination. That is data based. That's very, very clear. I'm very, very, I'm a so very, you're, very, uh, very pro. You're, not, you're not suggesting that we should compulsory vaccinate. No, because because we know that we know that uh, we we don't have compulsory vaccination for flu. We don't have it for MMR. We know that those absolutely uh, in those for those who get uh, get I vaccinated. Think we should. Well, flu, you not think we should flu. not flu? So you're okay with people dying of flu? but not people dying of COVID. Why is there any but moral thousands difference? thousands don't die every week from flu. Thousands that, of um, a, a few years ago, 20,000 people died from flu over one winter. Yes, that's right. But so that's you just said thousands. We're talking, we're talking a thousand patient people a week at the moment dying of COVID. Uh, we, okay, let's, let's move on. Right. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just okay, saying, no, I, I am, I, I am, go. I am completely, listen, if the average person who is dying of COVID is someone who was dying in their early 80s, around the time when people die anyway, in no way am I saying those lives are not worthwhile and we don't want to make sure we save those lives where we can. But we save lives in the NHS and we save lives generally in society with certain rules, like people wearing seatbelts when they're driving in the car, speed limits. Which are compulsory. Um, yes, yes, which are compulsory. Those, but those so what's things, the difference between those wearing seatbelts and having a vaccine? Because one is full, one is, but what goes into your body is rather different from having to put a, a, a piece of cloth, a piece of equipment over your body. Those are different things. I can remember some very powerful, I'm, I'm afraid I've been at it for 42 years. I can remember people coming up to me and asking me for exemption certificates to seatbelts to begin with. Nobody does that now. Well, no, lots, lots of lorry drivers are exempt, but uh, I, my mother was working in A&E the week it happened and, and was very aware of, of the difference. Right. The, the point the point is that the um, point is the po you're putting in a minority view here you ask a thousand people and they will say we should be wearing masks and we should all be vaccinated if you say that then why is it that at least half the people on my train home aren't wearing masks people are going to pubs and cinemas and restaurants people are not wearing masks people in their workplaces not wearing masks people, are, people i think it's outrageous the, you think it's outrageous well but, but that's but that suggests that actually, I was, you know, I've been Oxford Street recently, huge numbers of people in the shops everywhere, barely anyone wearing a mask. You're telling I me do. that your opinion is the majority opinion. I would say people are voting with their feet. But I want to come back to this, this issue about the mandatory vaccines. We have an incredibly high take up of the vaccine in this country. We don't have a very well, strong anti We're falling behind now. Well, no, we are. we're only falling behind if you take, if you look at the overall vaccine take up from the ages that are 12 upwards. It doesn't matter about 12 year olds being vaccinated. Our take up from 60 plus is is 96 percent on every most most people of that age group have had one or two mostly two vaccines many have had boosters the people who most need these vaccines they have protected themselves so you're saying that the itus that are full of unvaccinated people uh, are there because we should ignore them that we shouldn't vaccinate make that compulsory no, oh, I think people oh, have a right. I, I think oh, people have a right read, to make bad read, decisions. Did, did you read the anonymous article in the Guardian over the weekend from the consultant looking after patients? No, but his I'm, IT or his or her ITU is full of unvaccinated yes. people. Yes, unvaccinated people are at higher risk because the vaccines work. So why should why should why they're also are they're, they, and also I, when vaccinated? it comes to younger patients, they're full of people who are obese. But we don't mandate people not being obese. We allow people in a free and liberal democracy to make poor decisions about their lives. And we can argue with them, we can persuade and cajole and educate, and there's loads of evidence. But actually, there isn't a vaccine against obesity, I'm afraid. Well, there, there are plenty of much easier ways of dealing with obesity, but that's not the point. Yes, the point but you, is, can't, you can't legislate against obesity. You can legislate against getting COVID. No, you can't legislate against getting COVID. The vaccine doesn't stop you completely from getting COVID. We know no, but it reduce... stops you from dying. Look, but those are two IPU. different things, aren't they? Those are two very different things. No, they're not. Well, yes, I'm they telling are. You. The what are you my, my, in, my in laws in their 70s who've just had their boosters sitting there with no symptoms at all um, from COVID is very different from them lying in an ICU unit. True, true. But I'm saying that you're you're talking about obese people at the moment at the high risk. I'm, I'm point, no, I'm pointing out there are lots of things that put pressure on the NHS. There are lots of things that damage people's health and, and could cause them an early death. And we, what we do in those situations is we educate and we advise and we cajole and we may have taxes and things that push people in. And certain we could directions. make it compulsory. But we like don't belts. make it compulsory for people not but to be. Seat belts are compulsory. <laughs> oh. It, 
I last time I knew when I got in a car, I didn't put the seatbelt in my body. I think that people should get the jab. So oh, people who are high what, risk. What do, you, what do you think you're putting in your body with a vaccine that's been tested? Billions of times. I'm not David. David, I'm not anti-vax. I'm pro-vax. I went off and got my well, vaccine. Then why don't Why don't you say it should be compulsory? Because those are di- because those are different things. Urging people to get something which you believe is good for them and is good for society is not the same as forcing people to do it. In a free and liberal democracy, we don't do that. And if we did do that, we, where we, does it uh, stop? Is it the flu jab that becomes compulsory? Is it the MMR? Is it, is it, is it, are people, I, I think, are people banned from getting fat? Are complex. people banned from horse riding because it's dangerous? What else are I, we going to ban people and control people doing? So you think this is the slippery end of the slippery Absolutely. part of the wedge? I don't think so. I don't think we're going to become a completely different country. We already we have. Vaccines. Well, we, we already are, because this vaccine has completely decimated the country. The fact the virus has. We have, well, the we virus have one hasn't. of the worst death rates in the world. Well, as we are seeing with other countries, as they are seeing that going in different waves, they are seeing their death rate go up and we are seeing ours having gone down relative to theirs. So it may well be at the end of a two-year period. They won't go that up we again. Won't... Well, we, we, we are seeing stable, stable deaths and stable hospitalizations, very, very stable, given that we've had case rates going sky high and down, sky high and going down. All the doom mongers on, on Independent Sage and others who were saying we shouldn't possibly come out of lockdown. We saw all these cases of people in their teenage years and their 20s who haven't been ending up in hospital. Yes, but the ITUs are full of fat people, pregnant people, people yeah. under the age of 50 who haven't been vaccinated. Yeah, but, We're talking about the unvaccinated that is overwhelming yes. the health service. Yes. Do you think you want that I think to go people on? And people need to be told those facts and urged to get a vaccination. But urging but someone to do easier, something... Much, is surely, much, much easier, much easier to, to, to legislate for it. OK, so if someone still... If you make it a requirement... We, legis- we, we put enormous taxes on cigarettes and alcohol. Yes, I know, but that doesn't that for... doesn't make it mandatory. What would you do to make it mandatory then? What What is your vision? Are, we, are you holding people down and giving them jabs? What are you saying? I, I'm afraid I haven't thought about the mechanics of oh, it. Oh, I mean, but I, but locking I mean, people in their well, homes I, I, unless I they get a vaccine? The because, of course, as you know, it's becoming compulsory in the health service from next April. Mm-hmm. I think it should have come compulsory this okay. week. But, it, but next April. So there are people in my team who may lose their jobs because they haven't been vaccinated. And, and you're happy with that? No, I'm extremely unhappy about it. I, but I think it's completely balmy that they're not getting vaccinated. You can think it's balmy they're not getting vaccinated. It's still, you know, pe- lots of people do lots of balmy things and things that aren't yeah, good for them. But that's you, part of the human at, condition. Again, if you look at policemen in New York where it's compulsory... When it became compulsory, those balmy people got vaccinated. Actually, a, a huge number of people lost their jobs.